introduce our speaker for this morning, um, Elliot Felix, who also happens to be a board member at MCAT as well. Everybody. Elliot uh, is the founder of Bright Spot Strategy. He founded it in 2011 with the mission to make higher education more engaging, more equitable, and more impactful by transforming programs, people, and places. He's an accomplished strategist, facilitator, and sense maker who is focused on defining and solving problems for people. Under Elliot's leadership, Bright Spot has helped transform over 90 colleges and universities, including Car Carnegie Mellon, the Georgia Institute of Technology, MIT, NC State, NYU, New York University, Stanford, and the University of California, Santa Cruz, the University of Michigan, and the University of Virginia. His firm has grown from one founder to 13 Bright Spotters who have improved the experience for more than one million students who set foot, foot in spaces, use services, receive support from staff, or interacted with systems improved by their work. Elliot is a prolific speaker and writer on reimagining higher education, having presented at more than 80 conferences, including Educause, South by Southwest, the Society for College and University Planning, and Trade Line, having been cited in publications such as Fast Company and Forbes, and written more than 40 articles and publications, including Planning for Higher Education, Library Journal, Business Officer Magazine, and Touchpoint, the Journal of Service Design. Elias also serves on the advisory boards of Educause Learning Initiative, as well as the University of Virginia School of Architecture. So everyone, please, a round of applause for Elias Fields. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. I know that this is a class you all chose to attend to enrich your first year experience. And I, I really appreciate you making that choice and putting in the effort to make your first year a success. I hope I can play a small part in that, in your success this, this first year, and share some of my experience and, and hear from you. And we can think together uh, about how to have a successful first year. Um, <laughs> it worked before. Okay, there we go. So, um, to introduce myself, I, uh, I, I thought I'd share a little bit, a little story. Um, how many of you have taken a standardized test where you're like going in? Excellent. How many of you have think creativity is important? Right, I do. I do too. And uh, you may not know this, but I moved to Minneapolis three and a half years ago from. Uh, from Brooklyn, and uh, this is my daughter Nora. Who's, she's about four in the photo. She's eight and a half now. Um, I also have a son Theo, who's five and a half, and uh, we we love it here. And it's been a great transition. And one of the things about living in New York City is that kindergarten is bonkers, and, and things get things get crazy whenever you're competing with millions of people. Um, and so one of the things you do. Uh, or you can do in kindergarten, you know, if you want smaller classes, if you want to be in the same school as your friends down the street, other other families, you know, uh, you can take an entrance exam, and this is when you're four, so you take uh, you take the the whole set. Uh, bear in mind, you're you're four, you're not quite four, so you can't read. So somebody has to read you the questions, and you have to point to the answers. And if this whole thing sounds ridiculous, it, it kind of is, but a moment that my daughter Nora and I shared, I think was has been as impactful as any as I think about education and, uh, and, and the future and your future. And so we're going through the, the questions, practicing a test, sitting on the couch in our apartment in Brooklyn. And uh, the question is, Dan has five balloons and he pops two. How many does he have left? And so of course, the, you know, they're, they're looking for three as the answer. But Nora turned to me and she said, why did he pop the balloons? And I thought, that's such a better question. And let's not, you know, I think kids can be more than calculators. And we can think about people like, what's going on with Dan? Like, why is he popping, why is he popping his balloons? Balloons are pretty great. Uh, and, and I think asking better questions, thinking about people, understanding them, uh, being creative. I think that's really what education is all about. And I, I hope today and in your, your first year and, and in all your time uh, at MCAT, you're able to, 
think creatively, ask better questions, to understand understand people. And I think that will help you, and it will it will help uh, it will help your work. Um, and that that thinking about you know about education, about creativity, um, that's really that's really been a big part of my work. I've been lucky enough to work with uh, now more than 100 college and universities. Um, this is about 80 of them. They don't they don't all fit on here. And uh, and those are those have been great experiences to understand students, their needs, how they're changing. Students like you, the, the courses they take, the communities they're a part of, the career paths they identify, the campuses they uh, they take advantage of and, and enjoy. And I, I took what I've learned from working with all those colleges and universities, and talking to thousands of students, and surveying millions of them, and I tried to still those lessons in how to get the most out of college so that uh, students can make the most of their college experience just like you all are as part of this as part of this course uh, and I think to get started I would love to know I know you're two weeks into the semester I'd love to know just like a little bit about where you're at and what you're thinking um, so I can be as helpful as possible so a couple of quick questions for you um, what, what's something you're most excited about what are some things you're excited about for this, this semester? Let me know. Go ahead. I'm really excited to learn how to animate. Okay. I'm also really concerned about how to animate. So. <laughs> related, right. Yeah. So interest, yeah. interest and excitement in animation, but concern, how do, how do I actually make it happen? What, how about some others? There's a lot of stuff on ESPN. There was a club, uh, club fair recently, joining some clubs. Nice, joining some clubs. That's exciting. A couple more? Something you're excited about? Yeah. I'm 3D and I'm excited to learn how to power tools. Nice. 3D power tools. <laughs> I'm really hoping I don't cut off my finger. That's nice. <laughs> you know, until you said cut off a finger, I wasn't sure if, if it was, you meant digital tools or like physical tools like table saw. But now I think you I think you mean physical like table saw. I'm overlapping power tools, so now I'm excited. That's like a whole new <laughs> that's a whole new thing, but also like a little bit of concern that so you don't you know cut cut anything off. Um, something you might be concerned about, in addition to not cutting things off and learning how to animate? Uh, the fact that a lot of the clubs tend to fizzle out really fast. Uh, yeah, it's hard to sustain interest in these clubs, uh, and the, the energy might, might fizzle out. Well, let's, well, let's talk about that. Tuition. Tuition. Yeah. 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 The cost of education is definitely, definitely on the rise. Um, and I think that's what, what I want to help you do is get the most out of it because there are certain things you can do in college uh, to make it even more rewarding and even more rich. Uh, rich. Please. Um, Debating whether or not that's a big concern. I hope you say. And I hope we talk about how um, how you can maybe um, maybe get some get some ideas. Um, so the big idea from all of you and from my work and from, from talking to students and looking at the research about how to get the most out of college is uh, that it's not just where you go, that the choice you make as to which college to attend, that's really important. But what you do when you're there, that's also, that's also super important. Um, and the interesting thing about, about making these choices is that where to go to college is, a big, is, is kind of like one big decision. But you make decisions every day about a club to join or a course to take or a tool to use. And those decisions are what determine your success or influence your success uh, every bit as much as that big decision as, as to where to go. And the great thing is that these decisions that you make every day, they're hard decisions for sure, but you don't have to guess at them because there's tons of research, there's decades of research about what helps students succeed. And you can use that research to make, to make better decisions. And I tried to compile that. You're, you're probably not reading hundreds of academic studies on student success. You know, neither was I until I got into consulting and, and wrote this book, but I tried to compile them make them you know, accessible, accessible to you. 
And I think um, and so I, I just have to hang out here. I'm, sure, I'm on a short list to give my, my advancer. So to make these decisions, you can think of them as design decisions because you're the designer of your of your experience. Um, and every every choice you make about a class to take or a tool to use or a group to get involved in, um, those are design decisions as you're creating your own your own path to and through uh, through college. And for me, design is really about these three things. It's about understanding people, making connections, and trying things out and that's the mindset you can bring to your to your education you can understand people especially yourself because you're you're designing for yourself as you think about your experience at MCAT and, and beyond uh, so understanding what lights you up what gets you excited what are you interested in what are your strengths what are you working on um, and then making connections like how can you do something uh, that maybe connects a class and a club so you know, you've all got limited time, you've got limited resources. Maybe there's a way to get two for one, or maybe there's a way that you go to an event and you talk about it in a class, and you do that in a way where you're trying to experiment, you're testing things out, you're trying things out. You know you're not going to get it right to start with, um, but you can learn from it regardless. And so um, these are these are this is really like the overall mindset. Or getting the most out of college, and I wanted to quickly share 10, 10 tips, 10 ideas from the book. You're all going to get a copy of the book, so you can go through the other 117 um, as you, you know, in your in your free time. Uh, but I think these these are a good place to start, uh, and then we'll open it up for open up for discussion. I think the first one uh, is is really an important one, and this isn't this has no easy answer, which is like why why you went to college in the first place. Uh, and this is this is something that kind of unfolds over time as you learn more about yourself and as you experience things, as you learn things. But having some sense of what you want to get out, that really helps you direct what you put in. Um, maybe you want to uh, design furniture or uh, go into animation. Those are having a goal in mind helps you be more directed when you're when it's time to uh, get involved. Join a club, start a club, sustain a club to make sure it doesn't fizzle out, um, and that's a great that's a great starting point. So is knowing like knowing your strengths, knowing what you're interested in, what you're really good at, how you can build on those things. Of course, they're all things that we're, we're working on where we're, we're not as strong, but knowing your strengths is a good, a really great starting point. I think um, you mentioned a couple of you mentioned clubs, how to get involved, and also how to. Um, that's also really important. I think you know I talk to a lot of a lot of students right when they're starting college, and they often get get advice like study hard. How many people had like friends or family say that like as you're going on to college, like, study hard? Um, but you have to have people to study hard with. So the like the social part of college, making friends, finding your people, finding your places where you can find your people. That's just important, just as important. Um, and so getting involved is really a, a key way to do that. It might be uh, it might be joining a club, it might be um, it might be a group that you you know you kind of click with in a, in a class. But uh, students who feel a sense of belonging, who feel like they're part of something, they're forty percent more likely to continue on to their second year of college. So I would say Study hard is important, but have people to study hard with is uh, is also is also important. Um, I think the other thing is asking for help. Uh, sometimes there's a you know you're you're afraid to ask a question. You don't you don't know you don't know what people are going to think of you for answering it. Maybe you think it should be obvious, uh, but I think don't don't hold back. Because the one one thing that's great about college and universities is they offer so much support. But so many people here, whose job it is to help you, and whose like personal mission is to help you, whether it's at the learning center or in the 
library or your professors in a class. Um, they're all they're all really psyched to help you, uh, and they can ask how you're doing. They can ask if you need any help. They can ask if you need any questions. Uh, but you can also ask those things and ask for help, and know that getting help isn't a bad thing. It's actually a key ingredient for uh, for success. So I, I also encourage you to take advantage of all the things that, that that are offered here to help you. And I think one thing that's also really helpful in your classes is if you can apply them to uh, make an impact for a company, for nonprofit, for your, your community. I think that's one of these examples where you get a two for one, because not only are you learning something in class, but you're making an impact for meeting people like for your uh, for your marketing class, right? That could be for a big company or it could be for a nonprofit in the, in the, in the community or for uh, product design class or an animation you're working on or a comic you're working on. Um, there's probably somebody that needs those things and I know that's a great part of what's happening here. Like uh, last year I learned about and wrote about um, MCAT's work with Red Wing, uh, Red Wing Shoes. And that's a great example of a real world project where you learn even more by applying something uh, out, out in the world. Uh, and whether it's the classes you're in, the clubs you're in, the way you get involved, I think ask how you ask for help, where you ask for help, uh, these are all ways to find community, uh, to find your niche. And I think when you're doing that, um, you know, there, there's a kind of a, there's almost like a pressure to fit in. How many, how many of you were like, maybe, maybe thought about or were told like that's the goal, like I need to fit in. Is that like a useful phrase? People say that, people say that, or you worry about that? I think fitting in is actually totally the wrong metaphor because fitting in implies like you change who you are to be accepted. But actually your goal is to find a group of people, it could be one or two people that accept you for who you are, that don't expect you to change, change who you are. So I think part of finding your finding your people um, is about finding acceptance as opposed to as opposed to fitting in per se. Um, and I think as you progress, you know, a real world project is a, is a chance to do something in a class that has an impact in a community. One step further is an internship, right? During the term over the over the summer where you can work with a company and you can try out, back to this like trying things out idea, and that mindset, you can try out what it feels like to have the job you're working for, you can meet people that have that role, the role that you may want to play in the future, you can pick their brain, like what was their path, how did they get there, where did they stumble, where did they shine? And, uh, and internships are a great way to do that, they're almost like a, a prototype, a way of testing out and seeing your own, your own future, Feels like it is a fit. That's great. If it's not, then you then you learn, then you pivot, then you then you adapt. And that internship, or those real world projects, or that club you get involved in, those are all ways to find a mentor, right? Someone who can, who can help you, can encourage you, and this has real results. I think one of the things I talk about in the book is not, you know not only are students who do internships more likely to be committed to and enthusiastic about their work after graduation, but students who have mentors, they're much more likely to think their education is worth it because they have someone you know, helping them uncover their dreams and like encourage them to pursue them. Um, and I think finally, as you progress, leading something is a great way uh, to learn and to give back uh, and to build the skills that you can use in your, in your future career. Uh, it also has an interesting financial payoff as well. Like people who've led a student organization or led some uh, led in their student government, uh, they actually have a higher salary uh, when, they, when they graduate. So with each of these tips, there's evidence behind the impact that may be about advancing to the next year. It may be about finding more meaningful and rewarding work. It may be about uh, making an impact yourself. Uh, but all these things are, are a great way um, to get the most out of college.